Hey everyone, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Here we are now with pack 45 of this Hatchet Lancaster Bomber B3, and this is the Dam Buster version. So, uh, as usual, we've got the delivery here in the plastic bag, all nicely sealed up, which was lucky because it was very wet when this was delivered. Um, so, we get our magazine out, put the bag over there. Our box of parts there and here's our magazine so as usual we'll have a look at the magazine see what it's telling us so a little bit creased up because this was all delivered in like a plastic bag but, uh, not to worry when it all goes in the lovely folder that they supply it will all be flattened out lovely so here we've got the introduction here we've got the development model there and here we've got what parts we're going to be getting so we've got the little trim tab there we've got our poly caps screws and our hinges and we're basically going to be putting it all together exactly the same as the uh as the flaps and then here we've got Lancaster KB976 a Canadian a Canadian built Lancaster KB976 missed out on World War II but has been in many battles since not least surviving museum accidents yep that's right um, KB976 in happier times than 97 sadly it seems unlikely that the aircraft will be fully restored in the foreseeable future yeah the um, the roof of the uh, of the um, Hanger, that's the word I'm looking for, collapsed and crushed crushed the uh, the rear of the fuselage. So, um, yeah, having arrived in England in May, on 24th of May 1945, by which time the war in Europe was over, KB976 had to fly back to Canada the following month. So there we are. Um, in 1992, the aircraft crossed the Atlantic once again, this time in shipping containers and destined for the ownership of legendary Florida-based aviation enthusiast Kermit Weeks for his fantasy of flight aircraft collection. The exact details of what has happened to the aircraft since then are not entirely clear, but it is known that the aircraft was divided into various sections and parts and split between different locations. I would suggest the author of this has a look at YouTube because there is actually a two-part video that Kermit Weeks has put out and he takes you through all the parts he's got. And he has the complete aircraft. In fact, the actual nose and tail turrets of the aircraft are with Peter Jackson of Wingnut Wings fame. So um, here we go. Some of the aircraft's turrets were to have been used in film director Peter Jackson's 2008 remake movie about the Dumbusters raid, which was never materialised. Although it's sad to see such a great aircraft divided, it parts its parts still inspire modern generations. Well, yeah, um, yeah. She's. I mean, he's he's got a rebuilt rear fuselage section, or it could be part of a Lincoln or something. I'm not sure. Um, but he's got everything else so you know if he decided to bolt it together then the main fuselage currently resides in the Doncaster Aviation Museum in England while much of the rest of the aircraft remains in Florida no the fuselage section is in I think um, isn't part of the rear fuselage isn't that with just Jane isn't that now bolted to just Jane having been rebuilt. I get confused with all these different KVs about and everything. But uh, yeah, if you look it up, this it, this aircraft is with, I've seen it, the wing centre section and everything. It's with, um, it's with Kermit Weeks. It's there. It's in Florida. The wing centre section, the wings, um, he's got all the undercarriage, wheels, tyres. Uh, I've, see, I've, I've seen the, the nose blister and the and the um and the glazing i'll have to go back and watch the video again but there is a full video two-parter from current weeks and he walks you through all his lancaster stuff and it's kb976 herman goring he was boring da, 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 so they say um there he was we all know about herman goring so and in coming issue 46 we're going to be starting on the rear turret so uh main gun turret rear panel No, it's the rear turret, I think, not the main gun, not the main gun turret rear panel. I think it's the rear turret, turret we're working on here. So uh, there we go. Right. Funny that in pack two, if you remember, they gave us the complete nose turret in one pack, didn't they? Or maybe it was in, in two packs. But it looks like they're going to be spreading this one over different parts. Anyway, let's have a look at this build. So this is basically going to be exactly the same as doing the ailerons so I'll probably just skip a lot of this um, 
beautifully packaged parts as normal with Hachette. Beautifully packaged. It's weird that some of the Hachette models I've seen Scott doing over on Building with the Boys, they come in paper bags, whereas these all come in plastic bags. We get our screws out, we've got our HP screws, poly caps, poly caps. <laughs> And finally, our trim tab for the aileron. And this is actually not a trim tab. Do they call it a trim tab? Yeah, they call it a trim tab. It is not. It is a servo. Um, the way this trim tab works... OK, we've got an upper and lower section. That's cool. Right. The colours look good as well. Um, the way this works, it is actually connected to the actually connected via a hinge there and in reality it's connected via a link here to the wing so that as the aileron is pushed down this is pulled up and because this is mounted on the aileron because it is pulling up it is actually helping to push the aileron down vice versa when it goes the other way it will help to push the aileron up okay so if you understand that it's in its neutral position it sits like this it sits straight like that and then as the aileron goes down, because this is attached to the wing via a rod, it pulls it up, which helps the air then assist the pilot in pushing the aileron down. So it's actually a servo tab, it's not a trim tab. Anyway. Right, so we've got six poly caps going on to three hinges, just like so. Just like we did on the flaps. Gonna go like that, that's gonna go like that, that's gonna go like that, that's gonna go like that. Okay, and then we've got those three there with R3 facing upwards, and we're gonna put those into the bottom of the aileron with the R3 facing upwards. Okay, so that's those three in, and then we're gonna fit our trim tab. I'm calling it a trim tab now. Our servo tab. It's got a proper name. I call it a servo tab. It's actually not called a servo tab. It's something else. But uh, <clears throat> it looks like Hachette aren't going to give the link because we don't have any holes or anything to put a link into. That's basically pushing together like that. Okay, we've got a very thick trailing edge there. <clears throat> you should not need any glue, it says here, but I think. I think we may do going forward, but we shall see. So we can take our wing, and that's what they're going to tell us to do next, judging by the screws we've got here. We're going to take our aileron. And we're going to fit it to the wing, like so. So we'll fit the centre one first. Should have got a screw aligned, shouldn't I? A smaller screwdriver. And then we'll put a screw. Into there, hold the centre in. And then into there. There we go, you can see there's our aileron working. And we just put the last three screws in. So there we go. So I would have thought we would now move on to fitting windskins and stuff, but we're not, clearly. But uh, you can imagine when this starts to go on the fuselage, this is going to be one big model. So I guess they're going to have sub-assembly, so you don't have this huge unfinished model to store around the house. As I say, my worry is, and I am deeply concerned because so many of you are unsubscribing, um, my worry is that uh, 
you know, if they pull the pin. That's that's my worry. Um, I'm not saying they will. I'm not saying Hasha ever have. I've just had people tell me via email that that's what they've seen happen in the past. So, you know, who knows? But there we go. So that's step 43, 44 and 45 all done. So um, you can see there underneath looking lovely. The aileron doesn't line up with the flap. So obviously we're going to have a piece of wing coming over the back edge of the flap. Um, so yeah, it's all it's all very nice. And that, like I say, that aileron does seem to stay together on its own. But we shall see. In time, it may just start to fall apart. But, uh, we shall see. We may have to take it off. And I can't see the paint's going to perfectly align on this camouflage. I, I, I'd be amazed if it does. But um, there we go. There so you can see now our Lancaster wing starting to come together. Sat on the wheel, all looking good. So there we go, guys. That has been pack 45. I will see you soon for packs. We'll probably do 46 and 47 together because they're both turret parts. So I'll see you for that one. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.